Have you ever wondered if our solar system once had a missing planet? Between Mars and Jupiter lies the asteroid belt, a region filled with millions of rocky bodies. For centuries astronomers speculated this wasn't just debris, but the remains of a lost world, Phaeton. The name comes from Greek mythology, Phaethon, the son of the sun god, who lost control and was destroyed. The idea of Phaeton is dramatic, a planet shattered into fragments, a cosmic reminder that worlds can be born and destroyed. It all began with a simple observation, a gap in the solar system where a planet seemed to belong. Scientists debated, was this the graveyard of a planet or something else? The story of Phaeton is a journey through centuries of astronomical thought from early telescopes to modern space probes. It's a cosmic detective story, with clues scattered across millions of miles. Did this planet ever exist? Was it destroyed, or did it never form at all? As we explore the evidence, we'll see how the theory of a lost planet evolved into something even more fascinating. Ultimately, the quest to understand Phaeton is a quest to understand our own cosmic origins. Over two centuries ago, astronomers noticed a strange pattern in the planet's distances from the Sun. The titius bode law predicted a planet should exist between Mars and Jupiter, but nothing was found, just empty space. This mystery sparked a massive search. The Celestial Police, a group of European astronomers, scoured the skies. On January 1, 1801, Giuseppe Piazzi discovered Ceres, a tiny object right where the law predicted. Soon, more small bodies, Pallas, Juno, and Vesta, were found in similar orbits. These weren't planets, but tiny worlds. William Herschel called them asteroids, star-like objects. The gap wasn't empty but it wasn't filled by a planet either. Why so many small bodies in one region? Had something gone wrong? The neat solar system model was suddenly messy. The titius bode law led to a field of rubble, not a majestic planet. This unexpected discovery deepened the mystery. Was this the aftermath of a planetary catastrophe? The idea of a lost world, Phaeton, began to take shape. Astronomers wondered, had a planet once existed here only to be destroyed? The search for answers was just beginning. The stage was set for a dramatic new theory. With the discovery of Ceres and the other asteroids, a bold idea emerged. What if these were the shattered remains of a planet? Heinrich Olbers proposed the disruption theory. A single planet, destroyed by a cosmic catastrophe, leaving only fragments behind. The theory was compelling. If you find a shattered vase, you assume it was once whole. Why not the same for planets? Meteorites found on Earth, rich in iron, seem to support this, suggesting fragments from a differentiated planetary core. Phaeton was imagined as a world with a molten core and rocky crust, perhaps as large as Mars. The asteroid belt became a cosmic crime scene, evidence of a violent past. For decades this theory captivated scientists and the public alike, but one question remained, what could destroy an entire planet? The hunt for the culprit began. If Phaeton existed, what could have destroyed it? Theories ranged from colossal impacts to cosmic catastrophes. One idea, a massive collision with another protoplanet, shattering Phaeton into pieces. Another, a distant companion star, Nemesis, disturbing comets and sending a giant projectile crashing into Phaeton. Some speculated Phaeton self-destructed, perhaps a runaway geological process or a massive internal explosion. Each scenario painted a dramatic picture of planetary destruction. For years these ideas dominated the debate. But as new evidence emerged, a different story began to take shape. Maybe the asteroid belt wasn't the remains of a destroyed planet, but the leftovers of a planet that never formed. Enter Jupiter, the solar system's giant and gravitational powerhouse. Jupiter's immense gravity shaped the orbits of everything nearby, including the region of the asteroid belt. Early solar system models revealed Jupiter's gravity prevented a planet from forming between Mars and Jupiter. Instead of gentle collisions, planetesimals in this region were flung around, smashing apart rather than merging. Jupiter's gravitational egg-beater effect created orbital resonances, destabilizing orbits and ejecting material. The result, the planet-building process was halted. The asteroid belt became a collection of fragments. A failed planet, not a destroyed one. Most of the original material was ejected. What remains is less than 1% of what could have formed a planet. Jupiter, not catastrophe, was the great disruptor. The asteroid belt is a monument to a planet that never was. As planetary science advanced, the disruption theory lost ground to a new explanation, the accretion theory. The asteroid belt, it turns out, is leftover material from the early solar system, blocked from forming a planet by Jupiter's gravity. The evidence? The total mass of the belt is tiny, 
only about 4% of the moon's mass. If a planet had been destroyed, we'd expect much more debris. The asteroids themselves are chemically diverse, not fragments of a single differentiated world. They're a mix of carbon-rich, rocky, and metallic bodies. Many worlds that never merged. The modern consensus, Phaeton never existed. The asteroid belt is a relic of failed planet formation, not a cosmic crime scene. Jupiter's gravity was the spoiler, halting accretion and scattering the building blocks. The story is less dramatic but reveals the chaotic, delicate process of planetary birth. The search for lost worlds didn't end in our solar system. In recent decades, astronomers have discovered thousands of exoplanets' planets orbiting other stars. Using telescopes like Kepler and TESS, they've found that planets are common throughout the galaxy. The transit method detects planets by the tiny dimming of a star's light as a planet passes in front. The radial velocity method finds planets by measuring the star's wobble, caused by an orbiting planet's gravity. These techniques have revealed a stunning diversity hot Jupiter's planets with two suns and rogue worlds. Super-Earths, rocky planets larger than Earth are especially intriguing, as they don't exist in our solar system. Each discovery expands our understanding of how planets form and evolve. The hunt for exoplanets is rewriting the story of planetary systems. Among the exoplanets, the most exciting are those in the habitable zone, the Goldilocks zone, where conditions might allow liquid water. Red dwarf stars, the most common in our galaxy, have close-in habitable zones, making them prime targets. Planets here may be tidally locked, with one side in perpetual daylight and the other in darkness. Life could exist in the twilight terminator zone between hot and cold. Astronomers use telescopes like James Webb to analyze exoplanet atmospheres searching for biosignature gases like water vapor or oxygen. Finding a rocky world with such an atmosphere would be a profound discovery. The search for life is about more than distance, it's about chemistry, climate, and possibility. Each new world brings us closer to answering the question, are we alone? Our journey began with the ghost of Phaeton, a lost planet imagined from a gap in the heavens. The story of planetary destruction gave way to a new understanding, the asteroid belt is a failed planet, not a shattered one. This shift shows how science evolves refining its ideas as new evidence emerges. The search for Phaeton reflects our deep need to understand our place in the cosmos. Today the quest has expanded beyond our solar system, as we discover new worlds and new possibilities. Every super-Earth, every strange planetary system adds to our cosmic story. We're living in a golden age of discovery, moving from counting planets to exploring their atmospheres and climates. The search for lost worlds and new horizons are two sides of the same coin both about understanding how planets form, evolve, and what makes a world like ours possible. Each discovery inspires us to keep exploring, questioning and reaching for the stars. The sky is full of stories and we've only just begun to read them.